and three and two and one. Shalom, everybody. I hope you're doing good. We're discussing the colorful, colorable condition we are in as we read the secret histories. Uh, I think it's about 30 chapters. We go down. We're going to be looking at 30 chapters. Uh, right now, we are in chapter 11. Uh, actually, no. That's nine. Here, uh, 11. How uh, the defender of the faith ruined his subjects. And we'll be picking up right there. Uh, everybody's alive, doing good. We had to donate the sheep. The sheep that we had, we had to donate. Winter's coming, and he's already spent summer alone. He's had a groundhog as a friend. He's had two or three cats. Uh, as a friend, but uh, figure it's time to get him around some other animals. We prefer to get him around some other sheep, but just uh, none really in the area. So he is now hanging out with a big hog, a pony, and uh, I think that's the only animals there right now. Uh, and he's got his own little stable. It's it's nice. It's uh. It's about the size of half of our house. It's interesting. Full of hay. Full of hay. The children are doing good. You can hear uh, Paracon Hitler uh, screaming in the background. When he acts normal, we just call him Escheru. And, uh, of course, Aminius is making his way. If you'd like to uh, help out, you can always uh, Google us through PayPal. Or, you know, they're, they're the same company. Uh... And, uh, it's just, goldenisraelite at gmail.com, you know, uh, a couple bucks, buys coffee, all that good stuff. As we see, we've been doing the Roman histories from the recap, uh, so we're going to continue and we have the Sabbath lesson, the true calculation of the biblical months. I hope people enjoyed that. It is uh, a hair puller to sit there and try to figure all this out. Now I understand why many people worked on calendars in the past. Uh, as we look at the secret histories, we'll just go over some of the uh, players. We have Black Justinian. You have to add these things in to get these images we have black photius and we have to add these things in to get these images uh we have theodosius uh we know he died of dysentery he never made it to this image that they present to us here this must be a different theodosius uh so much so they ripped the coin in half ah uh, and then we have Black Procopius, the actual writer of all this. And uh, great thanks to him. All praise to the Most High. Thanks to the man for doing his work so that we know we're dealing with uh, Black Belisarius, who has <coughs> lost his status, has been enslaved to his wife, after conquering northern Africa and conquering Italy, and then sailing up and down the sea like a pirate, plundering peoples of their own region. As we look at Black Antonia, the wife of Belisarus, uh, nothing truly comes up that shows us the actual image, but this should be of interest when we hit black uh, negro theodora some interesting pictures come up and if you see it says miss theodora holly port of prince haiti all right she's the author of a book called the haitian girl if you take these images the image of her face and you look at the antonia image that is presented here or even here, you'll see that there are some interesting things of how the face is 
Now again, Theodora is being written about when she's in her 60s and, uh, and prior to that. And again, uh, this is the whitewashed image that we get. Again, these people would not have been here. These Latins would have been in Africa. These uh, Caucasus would have been behind the Caucasus Mountains. So again, these images are just whitewashed. That is why all of the people have Afros or Afro-esque uh, shapes to their head. Again, if you have straight hair and it's pulled back, it's not going to be poofy like this. It's just going to be straight. So, you know, the idea that they're wearing you know, these things are, are silly because, again, you don't see them wearing these things today. Again, if you see a sister, a melanated woman, a colored woman in hair colors, this is the silhouette that you would see. Uh, and uh, I'm going to just go on from there because, you know, this is utter disgust in a nation that claims that we don't respect assumption and every one of our books is full of the assumptions and again uh, uh, Belisarius uh, is uh, famous for destroying the Ostrogoths off of the face of the earth and he is famous for destroying the Vandals and the Alans off the face of the earth and you see it's a North African all right. Now, again, if you look at these images of these people, all right, it's 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 really sad that they pr portray. See, this is Gilimir, Gilimir, right? The image here could just as well be this image. So the idea of saying that these are the Byzantine when clearly they're the fucking Latins is insane. And you can't be everywhere in the world when you're written to be in one place. So, again, we have to go over the images of assumption because our ancestors are hidden from us through a lot of this garbage that has been brought to us by people that we call Caucasian and Latin. If you are watching and you're Caucasian or you are Latin, these are the, the lies that your forefathers left so that you could be around this promised land. This is why the Bible always talks about lies and that these children will one day wake up and say, we were taught lies. good for us to have to be yoked with a group or groups of assumptioners, which is just another word for pure liars. Okay, so, again, if you'd like to help out the family, there's a way to reach us through PayPal. We appreciate it. Let's get started. How the defender of the faith ruined his subjects. Remember, God makes kings, and of course, God would make emperors. And of course, when an emperor fails his people, his people become ruined. As soon as Justinian came into power, he turned everything upside down. Now, this is the time of Justinian, where uh, his uncle has just died, right? Whatever had before been forbidden by law, he now introduced into government. While he revoked all established customs, as if he had been given the robes of an emperor on the condition he would turn everything topsy-turvy. Existing offices, 
he abolished and invented new ones for the management of public affairs. He did the same thing to the laws and to the regulations of the army. And his reason was not any improvement of justice or any disadvantage or any advantage, but simply that everything might be new and named after himself. And whatever was beyond his power to abolish, he renamed after himself anyway. Of the plundering of property or the murder of men, no weariness ever overtook him. As soon as he had looted all the houses of the wealthy, he looked around for others. Meanwhile, throwing away the spoils of his previous robberies in subsidies to barbarians or senseless building extravagances. And then he had ruined perhaps, perhaps myriads in this mad looting. He <coughs> he immediately sat down to plan how he could do likewise to the others in even greater numbers. As the Romans were now at peace with all the world, and he had no other means of satisfying his lust for slaughter, he set the barbarians all to fight to fighting each other. And for no reason at all, he sent the Huns chieftain with the idiotic magnanimity gave them large sums of money, alleging he did this to secure their friendship. This, as I have said, he had also done in Justin's time. These Huns, as soon as they had got, his, uh, had got this money, sent it to their soldiers, to others of their chieftains, with the word to make inroads into the land of the emperor. So, we got this money from the emperor, turn yourselves towards the emperor, so that they might collect further tribute, monies from him, to buy off in a second piece, to buy them off in a second piece. Thus the Huns enslaved the Roman Empire and were paid by the emperor to keep on doing it. I hope you understood that. All right, so those of you that have watched uh, Marco Polo on Netflix, this should be connecting it uh, to it in your mind after the Marco Polo events and they expand. Of course, here you have them in the Roman Empire now. <clears throat> this encouraged still others of them to rob the poor Romans and after pillaging them, they too were further rewarded by the gracious emperor. In this way, all the Huns, for when it was not one tribe of them, it was another, continuously overran and laid waste to the empire, for the barbarians were led by many different chieftains and the war, thanks to Justinian's senseless generosity, as thus endlessly protracted. Consequently, no place, mountain or cave, or any other spot in Roman territory during this time remained uninjured and many regions were pillaged more than five times. These misfortunes and those that were caused by the Medes, Sarsarians, and, Sla and Slavs, ants, and the rest of the barbarians. Okay, so here you clearly have the Slavs. Okay, so if you say Slavs today, right, you'll see images of people like Angelina Jolie. As if they continuously pump these images out as if they're cloned here you have it, over and over again right who does that look like to you hmm? does that look like Trump right 20 next door Slavs remarkably resembles famous people right so this woman resembles Trump, even the tan. This woman resembles Angelina Jolie. All these people are dead lookalikes for people that we are have in Hollywood today.
Now, how is that possible when you don't have lookalikes? Rarely people come to me and say, I've seen somebody that looked like you. Here's slobs. Squatting slobs in tracksuits, right? And what is that? Somebody that looks like Putin. Now that Slavic dude is ruling Russia. Somebody that looks like Trump. Just like that woman. Right? They must be just kicking out versions. Where's that picture? Right here. Kicking out versions of Trump. That's a man. That's a woman. Right? So, again, this isn't a Slav. But again, he resembles his own leader. So how does this happen? Right? Here's a woman that looks just like Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> how is this even so? Hmm? So many people look like Putin. How is that so? How is it so? That's Putin when he was 40. This is Putin when he's 60. <laughs> it's, it's, right? Should I even say anything? Should we just put Daniel Craig's picture next to Putin? All of these people are Slavic. Just put an E in there. What does it say now? Hmm? You already seen what happens when you put Arab masters in black slaves. Everybody's on a fucking lunch break. Look, it's Putin again. Look, it's Putin again. Who's the master? Who's the slave? White slave. White Slavic with Arab master. Oh, look, he's got chains on everything. All the people in the background standing around. Right? This must be a slave too. Right? Because this is what they do for slavery. They give you some weird ass bow and you just go around and collect arrows. And you, right? That's slavery. They give you some water to carry. Right? That's slavery. But you know what happens when you change this. Now it gets perverted. All right? Oh, look, they changed it. They changed it. Good for them. They're always watching. All right? So all the perverted stuff done got off screen. So now you put white slaves, and then they put, they put black people. They try a drawn picture. This is a, what? Assumption. Here you have, right? Why would you have white bitches tied up with sticks in your hand when last time we saw this, it went all perverted? With this title, it goes perverted. Now, they went and they changed everything. Hmm? You're the viewer. You constantly view. You've seen Arab master and white slave before. You saw all the penises out. You saw all the people tied up in every picture. Now, you do Arab master, white slave. Now it's back to black pictures. Hmm? Black pictures. Hmm? These guys are slaves, right? Fucking dressed from head to toe. Ain't that a Moab hat right there? What the fuck are they trying to do? Now they just straight lying to you. 
just straight lying to you. Hey, please stand here. Take picture. Okay. No, no. Take your shirt off. Take, take your, take your pants off. Wear your underwear. Make it look like you slept. What do they do to white people? The fuck out of here. Hmm. Oh. Oh. This is what I expected to see the first time I typed in Arab master and white slave. But see, I've got countless videos where I've done typed this in, and then it just gets perverted. Now, here comes Google, the line crew. Oh, excuse me. Is it the Latin or is it the, the caucus of Google? Hmm? Ha <laughs> ha! Right? Yeah, oh, now all the pictures come up. All the real pictures. These people are frauds controlling your society because you let them. You let them. When I type in black slaves, where do they show a slave market selling naked black people? They don't. That looks like a black man selling white people to Arabs. Oh, why would they change this? Because the secret was out. Why would they change this? Hmm? One black woman. Those breast assists are huge. And a bunch of white women. Why would they change this? Hmm? Who would do such a thing? People want what they, the truth. And somebody would go and change all this. Somebody would go and change all this to hide the truth. Oh, that's perfect. Oh. Oh, that's perfect. Power of chinickle slaves, really. Let me put it right in there. You see how no images came up? That's that's what happens when I save stuff now. Sometimes the words don't even come up. Oh, I already hit save now. You're going to keep on playing? The power of Google. The powerless. Hmm? Oh, this is just one company. Oh, God. Everything locked up. Oh, it's moving again. Good for me. Good. Oh, it's locked up again. Oh, it's moving again. Oh, I'm being Googled. Oh, it's locked up again. Oh, it's moving again. I'm just scrolling to the top. Every time it stops, it's locking up. They're not happy I saved a picture. Hmm? Let me bring this one all the way down. See what happens. Oh. Oh. A slave girl from New Orleans. She's white. F U Google. Ah. Oh, you slave girl. I'm swore. Oh. Want some of this hybrid chicken? Some of this hybrid chicken? Oh, yeah. Oh, this looks like a whole poor community, right? It's just, it's, it's silly. My Nigerian great grandfather, slow save. Oh, so your white grandfather was from a place called Niger? Shut the fuck up. I know the truth. Because the Portuguese went into the Nigerian region for gold and 
diamonds and they enslaved everybody. That's not Portuguese. You see the Africans walking around your neighborhood now? Looking kind of like you? That's Portuguese. Hmm? Not these people. My Nigerian grandpa. Did, did, did anybody know the Nigerians got enslaved? Niger got enslaved. Not Negro. Not not Negroes. The people of Nigeria. See, this is what they don't want to tell you, man. Why do you got a slave market and they, there's a white person? Right? God does justify slavery. He just doesn't justify these assumption images. That's all it is. It's a proxy lie. Oh, he must be a slave, well dressed, a knife on his fucking chest, sticking out of his belt. No, nah, bro, he's not the slave. He's the slave master. Oh, boy. This would take forever. Going through all these lying ass pictures put up by liars. Who controls this? Who controls this? Send them back beyond the Caucasus Mountains. It's time to go back. All these barbarians gotta go home. I described in my previous work, but as I've said in the preface of this narrative, the real cause of these calamities remain to be told here. Now, back to the opposing general, Chosros. Also, he paid many centauris in behalf of peace, and then with unreasonable arbitrariness, caused the breaking of the truce by making every effort to secure the friendship of Alamander and his Huns, who had been in alliance with the Persians. But this, and this is the Persian, but this is freely discussed in the chapters on the subject. Moreover, while he was encouraging civil strife and frontier warfare to confound the Romans, with only one thought in his mind that the earth should be run red with the blood with human blood and he might acquire more and more booty he invented a new means of murdering his subjects now among the christians in the roman empire there are many with detesting doctrines which are also which are called heresies by the established church such of those of the Montanist, Montanists and Sabatines, and whatever other cause the minds of men to wander from the true path. All of these beliefs he ordered to be abolished, and their, and their place taken by the orthodox dogma threatening among the punishment, punishments for disobedience, loss of heretics' rights, to will property to his children or other relatives. You live in a situation today where your family rights are taken from you. This is the loss of the heretic's right to will property to his children or other relatives being was it intestate? Having, uh, not having me, so it's testate. So say you are testate, having a valid will before you die, and the Roman emperor would block you the loss of the heretic's right to will property. All right, it took me a second. I had to think about it. We've covered this before. This is why your birth certificates have all caps. Right? Diminished capacity is a term in Roman law referring to the extinguishing, either in whole or in part, of a person's status and legal capacity. There are three changes of state or condition. State, e-state. 
attained with different consequences. Maxima, media, and minima. All right, media is middle, max is high, right? Here's maxima, media, minima. Maxima, right? The greatest. This is diminishing, right? Diminished capacity. So this is the greatest diminished capacity. Involves the loss of liberty. You don't have it. Loss of uh, citizenship. Bro, you don't have it. And again, the loss of family. You think that you're an American, but you live in USA. You don't live in America. America is dead. It died. It was overthrown during the Civil War, being made a slave or a prisoner. Now, eighteen sixty five, the Civil War ends. All the black countries fall to the barbarians we're reading about now. The Latins, the Slavics, the Circassians. In fact, in 1865, the Circassians lost their war and not being made slaves, they were brought to America before America turned to USA. Lincoln did not free the slaves. Freedom of slaves is manumission. Lincoln did what? He changed their ownership by making the state their owner. The state is subject to the government, which is truly just the IRS. Media, capitis diminisho media, the next change of state, consists of the loss of citizenship and family without any forfeiture of personal liberty. So you have liberties, you don't have rights. You have liberties, liberties are permission. Most of us are in media, the middle. Stuck in the middle again. All the music you listen to, you think it's about love, you think it's about God, you think it's about angels. Most of the music is about law. About law. I, I feel so alive for the very first time. Why could he feel so alive for the very first time and he's a fucking adult? You think he got high for the first time? You think he made love to a woman for the first time? No, he got his papers straight. Again, when you look at O'Shea Jackson, don't call me Ice Cube anymore. That is my what? That's my Batman name. O'Shea Jackson tells you, you're prisoners of war, prisoners of war. You don't believe him? That's your problem. Capitus diminish, diminish, diminish minima, the least change of state, status, estate, consists of a person ceasing to belong to a particular family without loss of liberty or citizenship. Tribes are family, people. Tribes are family. Ceasing to belong to a particular tribe. Ethnos. Ethnic group. This is what they're telling you about. Over and over and over again. <clears throat> now the churches of these so-called heretics, especially those belonging to the Aryan descendants. Now, Aryan in color people's life is a bloodline. 
Aryan in non-color people's life is a belief. That's why you have Aryan churches, because they were taught the family, the tribal religious beliefs before they overthrew these people. Now they practice their beliefs or their original religions, other people's original religions in their churches. Remember, these are just barbarians. Uh, this, here, uh, yeah. Just barbarians. Now, neither, especially the Aryan dissenters, were almost incredibly wealthy. Neither all the Senate put together, nor the greatest other unit of Roman Empire had anything in property comparable to these churches for their silver and gold treasures and stores of precious stones were beyond telling or numbering. They owned mansions and whole villages, land over the world, and everything else that is counted as wealthy, wealth among men. So now you see how the Roman Empire is about to become the Roman Church. I hope you're understanding this. As none of the previous empires had molested these churches, many men, even those of the Orthodox faith, got their livelihood by working on their estates, the church's estates. But the Emperor Justinian, in confiscating these properties, at the same time took away what for many people had been, live, had been their only means of earning a living. Agents were sent to everywhere to force whom they had chanced upon to renounce their faith of faith of their fathers isn't this inquisition this which seemed impious to rustic people caused them to rebel against those who gave them such an order inquisition thus many perished at the hands of the persecuting faction the Inquisition faction, and others did away with themselves. They killed themselves, foolishly thinking this was holier course of the two evils. They did away with themselves. That's suicide. But most of them by far the, quitted the land of their fathers. They quit and fled the country. And this is what do you call this? That's diaspora. The Montanists, who dwelt in Fajaria, shut themselves up into their churches, set them on fire, and ascended to glory in the flames. Suicide. Uh, emulation. Burning. And thenceforth, the whole Roman Empire was a scene of massacre and flight. A similar law then passed against the Samaritans, which threw Palestine into an indescribable turmoil. Those indeed who lived in my own Caesarea and in other cities decided it silly to suffer harsh treatment over a ridiculous trifle of dogma, took the name of Christians in exchange for the one that they had borne before, by which precaution they were able to avoid the perils of the new law. So these people said, okay, we'll be Christians. Inquisition. The most reputable and better class of these citizens, once they had adopted this religion, decided to remain faithful to it. The majority, however, as if in spite of having not voluntarily but by the compulsion of law, abandoned the belief of their fathers, soon slipped away into the Machian sect and what is known of polytheism. Poly, more than one. Okay, here, let's just do this. Polytheism, many religions, right? 
belief and worship in more than one God. There you go. <coughs> yeah, that's some interesting shit, right? Here you have their pantheons, right? So this is where you get the pantheons. This is where you get your trinity. Do you see your trinity? Your trinity is not Christian. Do you see the Asiatic eyes? That's your trinity. You're drunk. Actually, the trinity comes out of Egypt. Horus, Hathor, Anubis. It's, it's not. It's Horus, uh, Isis, Osiris. There's, fuck, there's a bunch. Even when you look. Sekhmet, shit. So, here's America's polytheism. Right? And we have George Washington in something like this. Yeah, let's type in So there's good old George in his polytheism. Hmm? And this is what the roof of uh this is the roof of one of the buildings, like the Capitol building or something. Here's another picture of a good old George. Right? Takes off his war clothes and gets into Roman garments. And you don't even see Romans dressing like this. They they have a full body cloth, right? So this is how George Washington wants everybody to see him after he is uh formed the country after again the the survivor of the civil war right the the general who survives the civil war so the country people however banded together and determined to take arms against the emperor choosing as their candidate for the throne a bandit named julian son of sabras sabar yeah and for a time, they held their own against the imperial troops, but finally defeated in battle. They were cut down together with their leader. Ten myriads of men are said to have perished in this engagement. And the most fertile country on earth thus became destitute of farmers. Now, if you take a breath, you can see the Most High doing this. If they don't have planters, they won't have food. If they don't have food, this evil will have to spread. Once this evil spreads, it will reach the promised land. They will call that colonization. And a few years after that, you will be born and reading about all the lies. Hey, we're up to date. To the Christian owner of these lands, the affair brought great hardship. For, for a while, their profits from these properties were annihilated. They had to pay heavy annual taxes on them to the empire for the rest of their lives and secured no remission of this burden. So next he took, again, there is no remedy for this because he changed all the laws. So what are you going to plead in court? What are you going to, to argue in court? Next he turned his attention to those called Gentiles, torturing their persons and plundering their lands. Of this group, those who decide now, these are not barbarians and they're not Romans. This is everybody else. Torturing their persons and plundering their lands. Of this group, those who decided to become normal Christian, nominal Christians save themselves for the time being. Just temporary. But it was not long before these two were caught performing libations and sacrifices and other unholy rites now this is no different than what the israelites being taken down and you can't sacrifice to the most high and you can't have your your drink libations right and how he treated the christians shall be told hereafter after he passed a law prohibiting pedestry pedestry what is this Sexual activity involving man and a boy. Well, that's great. That's good for you, Justinian. He, after he passed a law prohibiting pedophilia, a law pointed 
not at offenses committed after this decree, but at those who could be convicted of having practiced the vice in the past. Now, look at that. So, this isn't, oh, I caught you in the act right now. This is, you are a known pedophile. I'm going to arrest and convict you. And you know what happens after that. They're going to be killed because he wants their property. You know, um, the conduct of the persecution was utterly illegal. Sentence was passed where, when there was no accuser. So there's no one to accuse someone of being a pedophile. So he just killed him on the word. You're a pedophile. I'm taking your property. The word of one man or boy, and perhaps a slave, compelled against his will to bear witness against his owner. So they made people lie and say, oh, and he fondled me or something like that. Was defined as sufficient evidence. Those who were convicted were castrated and then exiled in a public parade. So, wow. Again, even if you did not do this, they would pay or threaten someone to say that you did. Then your genitals were cut off and then you were displayed amongst everybody as you were kicked out of the city. At the start, this persecution was directed only at those that were of the Green Party. Now, if you guys remember the Green and Blue Parties, they were reputed to be especially wealthy and had no otherwise, had otherwise aroused jealousy. So again, the Green Party would start dressing down so people wouldn't attack them on the streets and kill them for their wealth. Now, they were already known to be wealthy and this arose a jealousy because of what the emperor was doing. The emperor's malice was also directed against the astrologer. The astrologer, according to magistrates, pointed to punish thieves. Excuse me. Accordingly, there is one astrologer. It says the astrologer. So there's just one. Accordingly, magistrates pointed to punish, appointed to punish thieves, also abused the astrologers. Okay, so now it's uh, pluralized. So now there's more than one. For no other reason that they belong to this profession. Okay, so this is just people around the city who take up astrology. Whipping them in the back and parading them on camels throughout the city. Though they were old men and in every way respectable with no reproach against them except that they had studied the science of the stars while living in such a city. Consequently, there was a contrast stream of immigration, not only to the land of the barbarians, but to places farthest remote from the Romans, out of their reach. And in every country and city, one could see crowds of foreigners. For in order to escape persecution, each would lightly exchange his native land for another, as if his own country had been taken by an enemy. And there you have it. We'll be back with the next one. Shalom.